It is the Riot Podcast. This is the Friday, April 7th edition. This is the last podcast without Nikki for quite some time because she's going to be back in on Monday and I cannot wait. Isaiah, it's going to be great, isn't it? It's going to be grand. It's going to be great. I want to tell you, I want to tell you about something uh, that I have a zoo membership. So occasionally I need to kill time. Just hop over to the zoo. I live right nearby. I didn't know you had so much fun. Yeah, sometimes. So it's good to walk around there. Get my steps Get in. Get your steps in. Yep, yeah, that sounds like something that you'd do. But you know what What uh, has really rubbed me the wrong way about the zoo, especially if I didn't have a membership, What's is that? that you go like this time of year. It's April now. They still don't have all the animals out. They still have. I went to, uh, I just went. Africa was closed. Not you could, Africa. You could, that's every. I mean, what do kids want to see when they go to the zoo? They, they want to see the lions. They want to see lions. They tigers. want to see ti- tigers. Are in Asia, I think. Uh, they want to see giraffes, cheetahs, elephants, elephants, all African animals. None of them there. I want to know why. It's too cold. What are you talking about? It's too cold. It's like at least fifty degrees. You're yeah, telling me it. we call the lion the king of the jungle. It can't live in 50 degree temperatures. I don't know. It's, it's used to Africa. Africa's hot. Africa is hot. But in some king, if it can't even withstand it getting a little chilly. I understand if it's snowing on the ground, it's not what the lion's used to. But it's 50 degree. Typically, like it's a nice normal day outside. The lion, you don't think it gets a few cold days in Africa? And you're t- trying to tell me the lion doesn't have some nice warm enclosure that it can go uh warm back up inside if it's not feeling if it's oh, not for enjoying sure the does. weather if it gets below if it drops below 50 the lion can just go in its den or whatever climate controlled you know Come what on. it is what is it they're, they're i looked it up they're they're able to be in cold weather obviously um as all animals are usually yeah but you know what it is what's that supply and demand what do you mean they just reopened the zoo, right? Yeah. Uh, no, the zoo's open all year round. The zoo's open all year round, but in about a month or so, uh huh, they're gonna do a big promotion. What's that? Africa's back. Africa's open. And then all the people that came right now, uh, what are we in April? All yeah. People that came in April, they're gonna have to go again. Yeah. Because now Africa's back. The lions are back now. Yeah. So probably if you just like- had lions all year round. You only had to go once a year. Africa's back. Maybe they close down Asia okay. when Africa comes back. And then they open up Asia well, in like two months. And then first of all, it's just a constant rotation. Two issues. One is that uh, why not have it earlier? It's April. It's not like it's February and we're all freezing. No, people can go to the zoo now. It's, it's warm enough. Especially kids are still in school. You take the kids on a field trip. You're taking the kids on the field trip yesterday. They're not even getting to see the lion. I don't think that's right. And secondly... Number two. You think they care about the kids? The zoo? Probably not. They care about money. You know what they care about? The almighty dollar. And you know how I know? Because even though I have a membership, they're still charging the same price for the ticket as they will in June when everything's out there. Mm -hmm. But you know the problem in June? Everything won't be out there because what do they tell you? It's too hot. They don't really like to move around. They find a shady spot and they just lie down. When are we supposed to go to the zoo and see the lions doing something? Jeez, you just really like to just use uh, Why these do I animals. even have a membership? You just look at these lions and you're like, dance for me, Play puppet. for me, yeah. Dance for me. Do something interesting. You're exactly, this is why PETA wants Zeus gone. Because of people like <laughs> you. Because of people like me. Jeez, I can't believe you have a membership to that place. I know, I shouldn't. You support that place? Yeah. That's crazy. You're right, it's wrong. I would They're never. They're ripping me I and everyone else would, off. I and the wish, animals. I just wish the animals could just be free. Got them caged up. Yeah. Unfortunate. Jeez. All right. Well, I just had to get that off my chest because it did rub me the wrong way. Because I haven't been in a while. I thought April. So when was the last time you went? April feels like a good time to go and where the animals would be out because the temperature has been fine. So you haven't been recently. I just went. Okay. So when did you go? Yesterday. Yesterday. Dang. Yeah. So you, when are you going to go again? When the lions come yeah, back. That's yeah, that's right. You when are. there's actually stuff to see. Uh huh. Yeah, you are. Yesterday was like bears lying down, which is fine, but that was like the only thing. Bears. Yeah. Bears are pretty cool. Bears are cool. Much cooler than lions because they can withstand uh, different temperatures. The, cold. the bears are still there when it's hot. Bears are there. The lions, for some reason, disappear when it drops below 65. 
princesses, I guess. I yeah, don't know. that's right. Some king of the jungle. Some that's king. All right, you got want to quickly uh, rifle through what's in the podcast today? We got some good stuff today. We talk about um, what you should be decorating on Easter. And it ain't We eggs. also didn't talk about Easter much. We didn't. If you guys are wondering. We didn't do much Easter talk. We span, spread, spread that out over the course of the week, I'd say. Yeah, we talked about Easter a little bit today. Uh, we talked about dad jokes. Trying to get us to laugh. Didn't work. Um, we talked about embarrassing situations and also why Little Mermaid is softer than ever. They're making some changes. Shocker. And I don't know if everybody's going to like them. All right. And that's what we talked about. Good podcast. We'll welcome Nikki back on Monday and uh, enjoy your Easter. Enjoy your weekend. We'll catch you later. See you guys. Disinformation. Mispronunciations. Bad impressions. That's Hudson. This is The Riot on Radio U. The changes to the Little Mermaid song lyrics. Why do you make it sound like the Little Mermaid is just for women? It's it's definitely not, but the but some are saying that the changes to the lyrics in the new Little Mermaid movie are for women. Really? Yeah, at least to one of the songs. Let's hear it. Uh, you want to hear what we've got here is uh, upcoming changes from the songwriter himself, Alan Menken. He did uh, the the original Mermaid music, and I believe he's he's uh, gone ahead and he's taking care of adjusting the songs for the new Little Mermaid movie coming out later this year. And he's made a couple a couple tweaks to make a couple of the songs a little more appropriate in his eyes. Number one, to Poor Unfortunate Souls. Of course, classically sung by Ursula as she's trying to convince Ariel to give up her voice so that she can uh, turn into a human and go on land and woo Prince Eric. Now, according to Alan Menken, I guess some people thought that those lyrics uh, taught Ariel that, that she, and women in general that they weren't supposed to speak out of turn. If you and, and so, what were the lyric changes? Uh, I don't know if we know the new lyrics yet, but I'll tell you that uh, you know. Remember this, Isaiah: the men up there don't like a lot of blabber. They think a girl who gossips is a bore. Mm. You think that's appropriate? You Got think it. you think young girls should be hearing that? I don't even know. I don't. I mean, I watched Little Mermaid as a child. Yeah, and they've sang these songs, and I didn't even really listen to the lyrics. You didn't listen, so I wouldn't have known. Maybe you're so indoctrinated Clearly, that I you guess already so. believe that women shouldn't. Uh, whoa, 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 <laughs> yeah, no. whoa, 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 whoa! So, but you know what? I'm thinking Isaiah is that, and this is true, that the villains in Disney movies need to be more respectful. You think so? I think they need to act a little bit nicer. You know, maybe that's what makes them villains, you know? I don't know about that. It's what, being mean. Being mean? Yeah. Having wrong ideas? You're supposed to Manipulating hate, people? You're supposed to hate the villain. I almost said the woman. So the, <laughs> I almost said the woman. So, oh, I see. So you're saying those lyrics shouldn't be taken out because they're so clearly wrong on their face. Men up there don't like a lot of bother. You leave that in because it makes you it's hate so the villain. It's so obviously wrong. Yes. So then you're like, oh my gosh, Ursula. Hater. You've convinced me. Uh, now, what about Kiss the Girl? A romantic, you know, about... Sung by Sebastian. Sebastian the Crab. The Crab. I remember this one. Uh, you got to make sure you keep the lyrics sung by a crab on the up and up. And so for, for that one, it seems like it's just a nice romantic song about, oh, like the early stages of love and, you know, what do you do? You're treading lightly. You don't know. Do they like you back? But that's all wrong. Uh, it's a song about, about consent. What are you talking about? You, they, Sebastian's trying to coerce Eric into convincing Ariel without her, uh, kissing Ariel without her consent. This is w- wild. Did, was that, is I, this what it, I mean, that, Alan, that's true. I don't know if Alan Menken as the songwriter is taking the fall for this. This is or a if wild this is what he believes. Assumption. And, yeah, but that they have, uh, they've touched up the lyrics. Now, it's, I'm sure it's probably a thing. I mean, yes, if you know all the words and you know it by heart. But is it ass to kiss the girl? Is that what it is now? <laughs> it's not kiss no, the girl No, it's anymore. wait for the girl to kiss you. Ah, never make your move. Yes. Never make, make your never move. Never make the first move. Uh, you got to wait for that, that consent because clearly Sebastian the Crab uh, in the children's movie 
was telling you to force yourself upon her. That's that's the message I took away from it. I mean, that makes so much sense. And it led to a lot of problems for me growing up. <laughs> so I think I'm I wish that they would have made that Alan Menken would have uh, would have been asked to kiss the girl. Yeah, then you wouldn't you should have figured this you out. You wouldn't earlier. have just been kissing girls. Yeah. So that's the new Little Mermaid movie. And would uh he begins so soft. Here we go again. Here we go again. <laughs> I mean, it's still going to be the same tune, and most of the lyrics are still going to be the same. It's just the ones that they deem problematic. So I'm sure if we didn't point it out, probably not a lot of people would even notice. I hate it. I would have noticed because I, I wouldn't see the it. movie. You hate it, huh? I just hate so when people get so ready, soft. It's you're ready so soft. to come out as the man that's criticizing the I'll new. Be, I'm fine with it. The lyrics in the Little Mermaid movie. I feel like I just stay consistent, and my consistent view is this is another time where people are just, I mean, they're trying to avoid getting canceled or whatever. I yeah. get it. But at the same time, we just got a bunch of softies running around, and I hate it. I hate it. But continue on, whatever. I asked to kiss the girl. I thought we all knew that. I thought we all knew that. We definitely don't. We clearly all don't. Clearly not, and because need, Sebastian the Crab. We need to learn it from Sebastian the Crab. He will teach us. He was teaching us all wrong before. To just kiss the girl. Add a little riot to your Instagram feed. Follow at Radio U Official. The Riot. Radio U. I want to talk to you about, you've heard of the Tiger King. Have you heard of the Croc King? The Crocodile King? Mm, no, it's not that cool. That would be cool, right? That would be cool. If you were the Crocodile King and like a crocodile farm, there's got to be, that's a thing, right? The crocodiles like obeyed you. That's right. They're like an, you have an army of crocodiles. Mm, You're like that's a, a powerful man. A superhero in a or movie. A uh, and you could send those crocodiles and be like, defeat the, defeat Loki or whatever. And uh, that'd be pretty cool. The Croc but, King. Yeah, but no, the Croc King is actually a guy in Connecticut who collects crocs. He's trying to set the world record for it. He has over 2,000 pairs of crocs shoes. His name is Doogie Lish Sandtiger. Yeah, sure it is. His and name's what now? Dougie? Do- Doogie? Doogie, like Doogie Hauser. No, oh, I see it, Doogie. Doogie yeah. Lish Sandtiger. He's 32 years old. He said initially... He used to hate uh, Crocs shoes, the rubber clogs. But when he got his first pair at the age of 16, so 16 years ago, it changed, it changed his mind completely. Once, what so many people say, once you wear a pair, you understand. That's what, that's what Doogie says. I didn't know that Crocs, I, I guess I imagined them being around 16 years ago, but I didn't know they were popular 16 years ago. I thought it was yeah, more, me either. It feels like it was more recent, but uh, for the last 16 years, he's been building his collection, and he now has a total of 2,127 different pairs of Crocs. That's and, so many. And uh, he's trying to get the, that validated as the Guinness World Record for the biggest collection of Crocs. It Crocs has to are be. about twenty to thirty dollars a piece, at least. At that, least. That's not counting like some of the the higher end. Claw, uh, Even if they were just twenty dollars a piece, uh-huh. that's over forty k in Crocs. That's sad. It is Isn't that pretty, pretty upsetting uh, that he spent that much? But you know, if it's something you love, if it's your thing, yeah, everybody gets a thing. We, you, and I probably spent forty thousand dollars on stuff that we care about, right? In total, probably. in our lifetime, like food, cumulatively, maybe not all the one same thing, yeah, but all the food. And experiences and outings and sports jerseys and all that stuff. It probably yeah, maybe it adds up to forty. I mean, our forty k is our a money's lot of going money. away somewhere. I know it's going somewhere, but forty k, holy moly, that's yeah, a lot of money. Just on that one thing, he's still got to live. You see, he's got a pair of fried chicken scented KFC Crocs. Yeah, do you remember when they did that? I don't remember when they did that. I I always that one concerned me more than the regular pair of Crocs because even though I'm sure it's not the case. It seems to me that if you were to put on a, a pair of KFC Crocs and they smelled like KFC, it would seem that they would feel greasy. Yeah, you would and, smell greasy. And greasy feet, if you've ever had anything that simula- like winds up simulate, like just makes your feet feel greasy, that is one of the worst feelings in the world. So those, those rub me the wrong way even more so than the average Croc. You think Crocs are cool? No. You don't think they're cool? I'm not going to pull punches on that. I don't think they're cool, but I don't have a problem. Some people, like say they recoil if they see a pair of Crocs and and, so, uh, and somebody wearing them, that doesn't bother me. If you want to wear Crocs, that's your own choice. Doesn't bother me but either. I would not wear them. 
See, I would wear Crocs. I wouldn't mind having a pair of Crocs to wear like around the house. I'm not a big wear Crocs out kind of guy. Okay. But that might be your style. But for me, around so the house, I'm cool with that. You'd basically wear them like slippers. I would wear Crocs like slippers, and I've wanted Crocs before uh-huh. to wear like slippers because they are comfy. I don't know if they're warm, though. I guess they have the lined Crocs. Okay, mm, yeah. now here's a question. If you had to start a collection to get a Guinness World Record, what is the thing you would collect? Mm, good question. I don't know what I would collect. There's nothing you love enough. I'm, I'm thinking of the things that I like enough that I feel like I could collect, and I'm sure that there's just no way I'd be able to get the Guinness World Record because the people who do collect them, like the, the bar already has to be so high. You have something on your mind? Uh, well, you know, if it was like DVDs or Blu-rays, I feel like that would be a fun thing to have a lot of. Yeah, that'd be cool. Even though you could never watch all of them. Uh, or like, I like sports cards. Uh, not as much as my dad likes sports cards, but I like them a lot. But I've just, found, I, you know, I used to collect them, but I just found, you know what? I, it's not like I go look at the sports cards all that much. And if I want to, I'll just look up a picture of it on the phone or something. Yeah. So I don't know what. I love that much. That I could collect. I'm, I'm not a big collector. Maybe like bottle caps. Well, that's just silly. They're, that's kind of cool. It, like It's like a picture. A if port- you make like a table out of them. Oh, now we're talking. See, that's cool. That's, yeah. But a, have, big, a big jar of bottle caps, not as cool. You don't think so? Well, mm-hmm. you got to have a big jar before you can make a table. Yeah, you, I guess that's true. So that's, that'll, that'll be my answer. I'd say bottle caps. Okay. You got a final answer? I don't have, I'm not a big collector. Nothing, huh? Oh, or hats. I thought hats for you immediately. Yeah. The words too expensive aren't in Nikki's vocabulary. This is the Riot Radio U. Talking of Easter, one of the time honored traditions of Easter is what? Painting eggs, of course. But you know the problem with painting eggs? You know the problem with painting eggs? Eggs are expensive right That's now. That's right. You nailed it. So, what I'm can good. you do? What? Can you do? Well, I have a solution. Painting potatoes instead. Stupid. Stupid? What are you talking about? Stupid. This is brilliant. Painting eggs sucked anyways. That's been going on for years. And it was a mistake. What do you mean? There's no mistake that's gone on for 60 years. It's so much trouble. It's so much trouble. Hundreds of years. Painting eggs. You gotta boil them. Sometimes you can eat them afterwards. Sometimes they break. Uh, you have to, That's the fun part. You can't just paint an egg. You have to dye it. You have to like make a dye with like vinegar in it. It can get on stuff, and then what happens? It dyes that other stuff. You just get, with a potato, you can just straight up paint it. You just get any paint. You're going to be able to paint that potato just fine. You could also eat the potato afterwards if you wanted to. Stupid. Couldn't you? The eggs are superior. Uh, but they're, the potato. they're, they're a difficult, they're, it's a tough ask right now to say, it's to, like five to say, mom, go out, get us some eggs. Them. Uh, we're not going to eat them. We're going to paint them. Uh, they're just going to well, be decorative. There's something you just got to make work. I, I think this is making Easter work. This ain't making Easter work. I think if it's, you're going to, you're telling me there's going to be kids. There's going to be kids who go to school on Monday Uh huh. and they're going to say, bring, go ahead, everybody. Paint some eggs this weekend and bring them in and we'll display them. Uh-huh. And everyone's going to bring in their egg. And then you're going to send your kid to school with a potato and he's going to display that. There's going to be all these kids. Oh, look at this. Yeah. This is the egg that I painted. And then this kid who has no idea, he's probably six years old, maybe uh-huh. seven. He has no idea it's supposed to be an egg. So he comes in with his potato, proud of his potato. Yeah, he should be. And then he looks around and he goes, everybody else is... He's holding an egg. Yeah. And They're then, crazy. And the what are their parents, goes, Rich? The teacher goes, little, little Johnny, what the heck is wrong with you? Why do you have a potato in your hand? Why did you paint a potato? And he said, that's what, that's what my parents gave me. Yeah. And then say, you should be embarrassed. My parents are frugal. They're, uh, they spend their money wisely. You know better than anybody. You got to spend your money wisely. Eggs, I buy eggs all the time. You can make it work for Easter. It's like five bucks. But... I mean, wouldn't you even be happier if you were eating potatoes every morning than eggs? Because I wouldn't. No. Be. I'd love to eat potatoes for every meal. That has nothing to do with this argument. Eggs, superior to potatoes on Easter. But if you, but the thing is, this is mm-hmm. what you have to do. Yeah. If you're an adult, you don't have to paint eggs anyway. What do you do? Just you not, just not do it? Just don't do yeah, it. Yeah, it's not really an adult thing. Yeah, but if you have kids and you want to you paint them, 
I think you got to go eggs. I think here's the the pro of the potato as well that it's I think it's less trouble. It's cheaper and and here's this. Bigger canvas. Potatoes are bigger than eggs. They so are there's, bigger. There's more that you can do with it. You can tell a whole story with a potato if you're painting it. That is Easter. true. If you want to paint a potato, show me what the end result looks like. Because I would be curious to know what it looks like. I think it's a smart thing to do. I, I think do. eggs are probably superior in every form. But um, if it comes down to it and you want to do potatoes, mix it up, do it. I think it's not never a bad idea to save a few bucks. Now, the one thing I'll tell you to take caution, and I guess maybe this applies to eggs too, but you don't want that potato to, dis- to be displayed for too long because it will go bad. And that, a, a, an old potato, is something that nobody should have in their house. If I walk into your house and you're, just, and you're displaying a potato, uh-huh. automatic judgment. You got you to gotta throw it out before it starts to sprout. Before people everything. see that thing. And that's what you did for Easter. You can do that with your little family. I'm don't doing this. Don't tell anybody I'm about it. Doing this, I'm make, telling all my friends. Don't tell your friends that this is the this is the Easter of the potato, the year of the potato. Yeah, we uh, we painted potatoes this year. And everyone's gonna say you painted what now? What was it you did? And they and they'll go, oh, what a great idea! I wasted a bunch of money painting eggs. You won't hear a show like this anywhere else, and that's probably for the best. The worst of the riot, Radio U. Do you remember growing up? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, When you were growing up, what is something that one of your, because you had siblings. Two of them. Something one of your uh, brothers got away with that you didn't. I don't know know. off the top of the dome. Or or what is something you got away with (laughs) one of your brothers didn't? I would say one thing that one of my brothers always complains about. Yeah. Is they said that he was always getting questioned about going places. Oh, yeah. And I didn't get questioned as much. Your parents just knew. They knew that I was a good guy. You were behaving. I was a good kid. But your other brother. My younger brother, Jaden. Getting into nonsense. I mean, troublemaker. And I'm yeah. joking. He's probably the angel child of the three of us. But yeah, he was always complaining that he was being questioned the most. Yeah. I think everybody. But he's just over dramatic. So that's just how it goes. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think everybody with siblings. You can think of a few things where just like it doesn't feel like your parents applied everything the same. I know for me, I was the oldest, and I one thing I specifically remember is that my parents had a higher age. There was an age I wanted to drink coffee, and I wasn't allowed to drink coffee until a certain age. But then the younger what siblings, what was that age? Twenty? Uh, it was definitely at least thirteen. Got it. Uh, and then the, even then it was like few and far between. But like younger siblings of mine, they got like a they got to yeah they got to drink mm-hmm. coffee all, and, and when they wanted to, which really burned me up. Oh, I bet you were so upset. I was, I was, I was heated about that, and obviously I've not let it go. But it's true, and I think uh, you know what? I don't even know about parents. Maybe they have a good reason for that. Maybe they don't. But I know that it when you see that going on, it drives you nuts uh, when you're a kid and. Uh, I think still as an adult, I see that now and it drives me nuts, even when it doesn't apply to me. Like I'm thinking like politics is a good example or like people always talk about men and women don't get treated equally, Mm -hmm. stuff like that, where you're like, it's not, you know, what's that old, the old saying is, uh, life isn't fair. It's not. Yeah. Even at the radio station, some people get a little bit more leniency than others. Probably me. Probably me. (laughs) Yeah. It's just, and it's not fair. And nobody, uh, like, so you just have to accept that, but it also, it isn't fair, though. And uh, so here's the good news, though, is that God is not like your parents where he might uh, let somebody else get away with something, and then you, he's going to be super hard on you. God applies every standard equally, uh, where God isn't going to punish you for something he's not that somebody else is going to get punished for. It, that's not how it works, because really, God's not in the punishing game at all. Jesus is in the loving game. Jesus is in the, the, the equal standard is no matter what you do and no matter what that other person does over there, God's going to love you. He's going to love them. That is how Jesus works. And I think in a world that's unfair uh, and in a time where it just feels like the standards are not evenly applied across the board, it's good to know that at least God is thinking that way. And that's more important than anything. If you want a God uh, in your life, that's fair, a Jesus that uh, loves you no matter what, and that's the standard, and that never changes, start talking to him. Say, hey, Jesus, I want you in my life. Uh, I want to know more about who you are, and I want to know more about your love. Start talking to him. If you want to know more, radiou.com slash free gift. 
The only thing Isaiah loves more than the riot is himself. Someone who probably still lives with his mother and hates himself. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. Isaiah stumbled across, what, embarrassing situations? That... A, a good old list of just embarrassing situations. I love lists. And I want to go ahead and get, get your opinion on some of these because these are things as I was reading along on it that I was like, wow, this has happened to me on so many different occasions. Uh-huh. And they related so deeply with me. So I want to see if we all go through these same, because they're all pretty much by yourself. Uh-huh. Things that you realize is embarrassing, but you're alone or somebody else calls you out for it. And we've all done these, and you don't really think about it all the time. Yeah. But now that they're in my face, I'm like, dang, I've put myself in some bad situations, right? So you want uh, people to text in the riot hotline? Uh huh. Seven seven two radio U. All right. What do we got? The first one I'm gonna list off: getting called out for laughing at something that you either didn't hear, or mm. you or you didn't know what it meant, but everybody else was laughing. Yeah. And then someone's like, "What's what was it that was so funny?" And then you're standing there like, what was what was it? What'd you say to me? Yeah. And then they're all they're like, what well, was so funny? And I'm like, I don't, I didn't really hear either. I just, I just laughed because everybody else was. Laughing. Yeah, and even not getting called out, but when they had, there's a follow up, mm-hmm. and then you realize like, you're lost. Again? You didn't get it. Yeah, that's that's a tough one. That's painful. Yeah, another one that they have listed here: getting caught taking a photo of someone. When it, I've never. Why You've would I never do that? had that happen. Why would I take a picture of somebody? You've never been like in a grocery store or somewhere in public, and you're trying to like sneak a photo of somebody because you think it's funny. No, I'm not. shut up! You for no, sure no, done that. No. You're telling me you never, never. You're telling me you've never no. taken a photo of somebody in public. Like you're like, oh yeah, my not gosh, a stranger. You're like, covertly. oh my gosh, Angela has to see this. I've, I don't think I've ever done that. Oh my goodness, that's a, there's no way. How about this one? Sending either a message. Or a screenshot to the wrong person. I don't think I've done that either. You've never sent a, an incorrect message. Yeah, not not. I don't not a memorable time. Really? I, obviously, that would be embarrassing. But uh, no, I've never made that mistake. I'm pretty careful about my. It. I do have, uh, and I've told this story before, but it's, it's super short. Is that uh, one time I was texting a gal that I was going out with, and I was trying to do voice to text, and so I said what I said voice to text. And then I accidentally didn't voice to text it. I recorded it as a voice message and sent oh, that. Oh, no. And so that was bad. That's, that's that a bad one. That was much worse. Lady. I mean, well, maybe not worse, but that was rough. And uh, that was nearly the end of the relationship, actually. That's bad. If I don't you, know if that was a coincidence. A voice or, message. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah, there's my, my roommate actually did it recently where he was texting he was texting this girl about one of his our other friends who had just gotten a terrible haircut, right? Uh-huh. And she was like, send me a picture of it. So he gets a picture of it, sends it straight to him. No. Straight to the guy that he took the picture of. And then he was like, what is this? And he was like, I love your new cut, man. Man. I love that haircut. How do you, you make look that good. mistake? Yeah, that, that was a bad one. Uh, the other one that's listed here, someone seeing you smiling to yourself. When you're sitting there, have you ever done that? Yeah, I mean, but, I smile to myself because I'm a happy guy. I've seen you do it too. Yeah. When, when you when you do something sly and then you're sitting there smiling to yourself, and then you look over and someone catches you smiling to yourself, that's a bad one. Watching a video of yourself, you've done this before. I, I yeah I uh, it's for work. For, I mean yeah yeah obviously. I've got to review the video podcast on the Radio You Riot Facebook page and YouTube channel, of course. Like sometimes I'll get tagged in something like on our Instagram or something, yeah. and it'll be a video that gets posted and then I'll go to watch it at like the gym or wherever I'm at just yeah. I'm curious as to what it is and then I'm always worried that someone's gonna come over my shoulder and be like really dude yeah a video of yourself or sometimes I'll be out uh like I'll be sitting somewhere and while I'm wait- waiting or wasting time or whatever I'll be editing a TikTok or a video of myself mm, yes and that yeah that's a tough look i always feel embarrassed doing that and then public. the last one i have here this is just one the tale is old as time uh-huh. and if you say you've never been caught doing this there's no way getting caught picking your nose yeah that's happened i've caught you doing that yeah on the show <laughs> Yeah, and it's vi- it's videoed too for everyone. It's one to of see. those things that whenever you do it, you're like, I never do this. Yeah. And then if you get caught doing it, you're like, Why was I even doing that? Like, how in the world did that even happen? I come by it more honestly. You can buy you come by it a lot. Yeah, I I pick my nose all the time. Yeah, pretty. If frequently. I'm alone in the car, 
And what? then I look over and make sure nobody's there. Yeah. Oh, that's the worst of the stoplight. A stoplight. I don't want to be caught there by a stranger. If you catch me here, it's fine. Yeah, if a stranger no sees me, at me in my Jeep. At a red light. Uh-huh. They're like, what's wrong with him? What are you doing? Yeah. No pick. No pick. <laughs> We're not sure who behaves worse. The riot or their dogs. I don't even know how to behave like a real human being. The riot. Radio U. Ah, yes, the time-honored Friday tradition of the riot's weekend watch list. This is what we've got for you to watch this weekend. Oh, I love this music. It just makes me want to watch something. Makes you want to watch a movie? Yeah, so here's what we've got. A big weekend for movies. And uh, the case with this weekend is uh, that a lot of the movies actually came out on Wednesday this week. At least that's the case with, first of all, the Super Mario Brothers movie. That's finally here. Uh, Isaiah, your level of excitement for the Mario Brothers movie, 1 to 10, going Three. into it. 3, you don't like Mario? I like Mario. You don't like the movie? The trailer. I certainly do don't it. like the movie. I just know that I'm not really that excited for it because I know I'm not going to see it. Hmm. Until I just come across it randomly one day. Yeah, when it's on Netflix or something. Something yeah. really random. But Maybe see, just TV in general. Tell me this. Have you seen... How many of the Minions movies have you seen? I've seen all of them. All of the Minions movies. Mm -hmm. I haven't even seen all the Minions movies. But oh, I, I believe, like Minions. I believe Mario me and the whole jazz. will be similar to the Minions movie. As in, like, they're going to bring back Plush with it and all that jazz. I think, I think yeah, and I just think, like, a sim even though it's... Obviously, it's based off of the Mario video game. I think it's going to have a similar vibe to it. It's made by the same company. Minions and, was pretty big. Yeah, so I Minions think, was huge. Actually, now that I think about it, it was pretty. It was pretty large. Now uh, I'll tell you that this is crazy. On Rotten Tomatoes, the Mario movie has fifty four percent from the critics. It has a ninety six percent from the audience. Well, people are pretty forgiving of Mario. Yeah, that's what I think. I think the average person is going to. Go and have a good time with this. Yeah. I think they're not going to be too. They say, basically, they say uh, it's thinly plotted. I was going to say the plot's probably not that great. Yeah. Yep. Mario, not exactly known either for having like the best, the most amazing plot story, but it's just fun. And that's all we want, right? We just want to go have a fun time. How much money you want to predict? You want to make a money prediction? And we're counting Wednesday through Sunday. That's a large timeline there. Yeah. I'll go with 61 million. That's it. Mm -hmm. You think Mario's going to make less money than John Wick 4? Mm -hmm. You're off your rocker. Because I've heard more people talking about John Wick 4 than mm -hmm. Mario. Uh, Nor have I seen a Mario commercial. I think that's crazy. I think Mario's going to make, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it, $100 million. That's, that's my prediction. Huge. That's going to have a huge week. People love Mario. I guess if it's Wednesday through Sunday. Yeah. You're given two extra days there. And John, the Wick, John Wick 4 is an R-rated movie. Therefore, no kids are going. This is not just mom and dad aren't just going for a date night. Mom and dad are bringing the kids. That's, that's a true. bunch of more millions you add in right there. Uh, okay, fine. If that's not for you in theaters this week, how about Air People starring? I've been talking about this. Yeah, Ben Affleck uh, getting back out there. Uh, and he's got... Matt Damon with him, and uh, they are working at Nike back in the good old days, getting Nike started, uh, trying to convince Michael Jordan to be a part of things. This movie has rave reviews. We're talking 94% on Rotten Tomatoes from the critics and 98% from the audience. Everybody liking it so far. Chris Tucker makes a comeback. Michael Jordan insisted that Viola Davis play his mother in the movie. I think it's uh, that's Jason Bateman. Yeah, it's a good cast, and I'm very intrigued. I would love to go see this. That looks like a more intriguing movie for me. For you, how much money do you think that'll make? Probably like thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna thirty-eight mil. I'm gonna say thirty, just to be different. Thirty, just to be a little lower. Or I'll, how about I'll go thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. That way, guys. I get everything under, under thirty. I like yep, it. Uh, how Price is Right style. And then uh, finally, one more movie option for you. How about the movie Paint? Have you seen anything Owen about this Wilson. one? Owen Wilson. He's a funny guy, uh, but it's, there's nothing funny, it sounds like, about this movie 
not because it's a serious subject matter, but because it only has 26% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's about him. He's basically playing a Bob Ross type character, you know, the, the calm painter. Mm-hmm. But things kind of go off the rails for him. Oh, so life. it is a comedy. It's supposed to be funny. Supposed to be. Doesn't sound like it really lands the plane on that. I don't mind it. I like Owen Wilson. Yeah. Sounds like a decent little story. This feels like the type of movie that you'd see on, on actual TV. Yeah. Or like Pluto TV one day. It does. Not as much something that you'd go to the theaters to watch. To watch. Yep, I agree. I don't even, we don't even need to predict a number on that. Nope, one. it's going to be low. Your For You page would be a lot more fun if it had Hudson, Nikki, and Isaiah. Follow at Radio U Official on TikTok. The right. Radio U. Right now, uh, I don't know if you've heard Keldon Johnson. He's an NBA player. Not exactly a household name, but he is one of the better players on one of the worst teams in the league. And I know Nikki would laugh if she was here. She would laugh at that. Uh, but it's true. The Spurs are no good. They're one of the bottom three teams in the league. Keldon Johnson, uh, he played last night. He helped them to a victory over the Portland Trailblazers. But... It almost didn't work out. It almost didn't work out for Keldon Johnson. He was almost had to miss the game because he had eaten uh, Bucky's barbecue, like Bucky's, the gas station synonymous with Texas. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well known. It's like mini Walmarts that are also gas stations. Nene from Texas loves it. Uh, Everybody I think who's been loves it, but he ate some barbecue. Keldon Johnson ate some barbecue at Bucky's that he chalks it up. He says that's what made him sick. Sick enough that he almost had to miss the game last night against the Blazers. Here's what I want to ask you. Uh, and this is a, a question that I want people to text into the Riot Hotline. 8772 Radio U. I want to ask, what is one food or restaurant that you refuse to have because you believe it made you sick or it was the last thing you ate before you got sick? Can you think of anything like that? Because I have one that instantly comes to mind for me. I also have one from another Radio U DJ here, so I'll share that first. Sydney. Sydney will not eat peanut butter because... I've heard this. She got sick, and it's not the peanut butter that even made her sick, but peanut butter is the last thing that she had before she got sick, and so she's throwing up the peanut butter, and so she now will not eat peanut butter, which is a horrible fate, because peanut butter is amazing. Peanut butter is real good. What a terrible thing to lose. Uh, so what is something for you that you won't eat because you think it made you sick? I don't have an answer. You don't have one? But I've never really gotten sick off of anything. And you've never thrown up anything? Not anything that's ruined it for me. No food has been ruined for me because of sickness yet. Hmm. Knock on wood. Yeah. That's, that's fortunate. I also can say, I'll call out, uh... A restaurant, or I'll say call I don't know out, because they might have given us out. they might have given us the food for free. But there's other people here at Radio U that will not eat at a certain fast. Fazoli's, maybe, perhaps, allegedly. So it is is uh, what some people refuse. I like to Fazoli's, eat. so I do too. I would eat it. But I would eat Fazoli's right now. You give me Fazoli's right now, I'd be very especially. So it's, it's only half slander. Especially the breadsticks. The breadsticks are fire. I don't. I don't I care like if they fazoli's. do make me sick. And you know, some people at the station they don't they don't they don't mess around with Fazoli's. I, I do, so I feel comfortable admitting that some people have vetoed it. So this is the setup. We're getting people texting in. We want to hear more people texting in at 877-2-RADIO-U. What is one food you won't eat because you think it made you sick, or maybe it actually did make you sick, or it was just the last thing you ate before you threw it up? 877-2-RADIO-U. I'll share my answer, and we'll see, look at the text next. Hey, they're already eating anyways. Might as well do it on the show. The Riot with Nikki and Hudson. Radio U. Setup is Keldon Johnson. He's a player for the San Antonio Spurs in the NBA. He almost missed last night's game because he got sick. And the reason he got sick is because he had barbecue from Bucky's, a gas station. So uh, we're getting people to text in the Ryan hotline. 877-2-RADIO-U. With uh, foods that they refuse to eat because they believe it made them sick. Uh, And I've got a lot of good ones right here. Adam. Piling on Bucky's here. Adam says he ate a sausage on a stick at Bucky's and it made him sick. So he refuses to eat that again. That's two that between Keldon Johnson and Adam. That's not two people calling out Bucky's. I let, love it. Let me ask you this. Gas, I love Bucky's slander. Gas station food. Does it make you nervous? I never really eat it. 
You don't? Not even. I mean, sheets, Bucky's, sheets, sheets don't count. Wawa, there's other places of that. I roll with sheets heavy. That's okay. Yep. I consider Bucky's in that vein, but I also think. Sounds like he's losing some of its uh, some of its goodness here. Might be, but I think it's worth the the risk for barbecue at a gas station. You think it's worth the if, risk if for I'm barbecue in the, at a gas station? If I'm in the South. <laughs> what a wild thing to say. If I'm in the South, I will take my chances because. No, it's worth it for, for gas station barbecue. It's because, worth it. Because if you're in the South, that's the best place. You don't want to go to like a big building. That you don't want to go to like a barbecue. With a crazy barbecue sign place. and stuff. No, you want to go to a gas station yeah. that has just has a smoker attached to it. It's worth the risk. That's where the good barbecue is. It is. Uh, That's the, best, the good stuff. The best barbecue I've ever had was at a gas station in Georgia. Uh, I like this one from Brian who says he refuses to eat State Fair Bloomin' Onions. I love a good Bloomin' Onion. That's sad. That's a tough thing to lose. You know what you need to do, Brian? You need to go to TR. They'll treat you right there with a the Bloomin' you, Onion. You, no, no worries there. He doesn't have to, He's allowed to eat that because it's a cactus blossom. It's safe. Same deal. Safe. You that won't make you sick. Eric says Wingstop. How dare you? I I'm not Wingstop. a big fan of Wingstop either, Eric. I won't lie. Uh, it never made me sick, but I'm not a big fan of it. This is a crazy one. Laura texted and she says too much pesto or basil because she was on a a trip to Cambodia and they and one of the places there tried to Americanize their food by putting a lot of pesto and basil in it and it made it real sick. Oh no! That is a crazy story. Yeah, there's one. That, I, I feel like you're justified in that. I feel, I, I understand that. Now, I really like this strategy from Jessica. She says not once, but twice she got sick from eating coleslaw at a restaurant. And so now the only way she'll eat it is if she sees somebody making it. Just to see the process. I would be, just be out. Yeah, just cancel coleslaw at that point. Yeah, I I'm would already be out. out on coleslaw and it's never me made too. me sick. Coleslaw is gross to me. Uh, and then, oh, I was going to share mine. Mine, just crack an egg. You ever seen those in the just grocery what? store? You ever, it's a, it's, you, this is not a, a restaurant. It's something you, you buy at the grocery store. It's called just crack an egg. It's a cup. And they're really great if you're keto. Oh, I see it. You crack an egg or two into it and you just put it in the microwave and then you have breakfast. It's like an omelet or a scrambled egg, and you just crack an egg. But uh, that was the last thing I ate before I got sick, and I just could never look at it the same. Mm, that was fair. But that's an easy one to avoid. Yeah, just crack an egg. There's other things that I've eaten right before I got sick, and I just feel that it's still worth it. It didn't ruin it because the food's so good. Like Wendy's. And I know Wendy's didn't make me sick. This is when I had the norovirus. Wendy's didn't give me the norovirus, but it was what I was throwing up after I had the norovirus. But I've forgiven Wendy's. It's not their, not their fault. Yeah, so it's not I'll, their fault. I'll still go back and get a Baconator. I'll be fine with that. Uh, foods that make you sick. Uh, foods that you won't eat because it made you sick. Tim says, the Gatorade didn't make me sick. I was just drinking it uh, a lot at, during the time. And, uh, oh, and also, he used to not eat Skyline because that's what he thought causes stomach rot. Skyline and Gatorade. Orange Gatorade. Orange Gatorade specifically. And it says it's not that what it's, it's not that it made him sick. It's just that he drank it a lot when he was sick. Mm. That's tough. It's it's so weird how your mind is like I can't I can't eat even if you know it's because they just crack an egg. Also, not what made me sick, but it's just the last thing, and it just you feels you don't. It feel just safe. ruins it for you. Yeah, you got any more? I, I the only one that I there. had was I once got sick off peanut butter pie. Uh huh. And I still eat peanut butter pie. <laughs> yeah. You can't give that up. That's the only time I've gotten sick off of a food, and I just powered through it. It's too good to And now pass I, just, I still love it. Yeah. You're, you put your mind over the matter there. Mm -hmm. It won't happen twice. That'd be crazy. That's right. What are the odds? While Isaiah is wishing for a girlfriend, Nikki and Hudson are just wishing for any friend at all. The Riot. Radio U. We are having a little challenge right now. It's the dad joke challenge on the riot because Isaiah and I, when it's just the two of us, we do not laugh out loud at each other. We don't make each other laugh out loud. We entertain each other. We just don't make each other laugh out loud. So we're getting people to text in and you could be one of them texting in the riot hotline. 8772 radio you with your best dad joke and see if you can make Isaiah or I laugh out loud. You want to go first or should I reading these off? I can go first. Okay, go for it. First one from Tommy. Yep. Why do calves mess it up already? <laughs> Delivery. <laughs> Terrible. 
Why do but cows... But it worked. I laughed out loud. There you go. Yeah. That was me, not Tommy. Okay. Why do cows have hooves instead of feet? Because they lack toes. Hmm. I thought I was waiting for something better than that. Dang, I need the cricket noises. <laughs> I need it. Uh, next one. Eric. Oh, I thought we were going to take turns. No, okay, you can go that... do Eric, and then I'll, I'll do Okay, one. okay. Eric. Why did the scarecrow get an award? This better be good. He was outstanding in his oh, field. Oh, I heard that one before. Oh, that's was a that groaner. Close. That's a groaner. All right, here's one from Danny. I liked it, Eric. Danny says, someone complimented my parking today. They left a sweet note on my windshield that said, parking fine. No good? That was decent. That was decent. Decent? Not a laugh out loud worthy, though. Not a laugh out loud worthy, yeah. but I was like a... I feel like whenever you read them, I think the person reading them is more likely to laugh. Than yeah, probably. <laughs> you got another one? Yeah, I got another one. All right. Aaron. This one's wild. Time flies like an arrow. Fruit fuck. <laughs> Fruit, fruit flies like a banana. You don't get oh, it. Oh, I got it. It took me, it took it. me yeah, reading it, it three times to get it. Yeah. It took me three times to get it. That's not a laugh out loud one. But no. I, I think this one's going to work on you. Okay. This is from Chad. Yeah. Chad said, what did Yoda say when he saw himself in 4K? HDMI. <laughs> so bad. That was a bad one. Chad. You should be ashamed of yourself. Uh, you want to do one more? I got one more. One more. Go for it. Brandon, not everyone thinks Cleopatra is beautiful. That's just how Julius sees her. Mm, That's pretty good. That is... Uh, I kind of like that historical one. Historical right I there. like that one, Brandon. Uh, uh, this is Here, I got an old school one for okay, you. Okay, yeah, give me a good one. That uh, Todd just texted in. He said, how do you make a tissue dance? You heard this one before? Put a little boogie in yeah, her. Yeah, that's, that's an old I one. I know that one. Yeah. All right. Uh, the dad joke challenge. You think it was a success? I think there was some decent text there. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I laughed a couple times. You did laugh. I laughed at myself. Yeah. The Yoda one made me laugh. Yeah, that one was. That was a good one. All right. Find more Riot content online. Riot.radiou.com. I got to tell you about this. Uh, have you seen... On TikTok, the uh, pickle skincare trend. I haven't. That's not on your TikTok? Not on mine. Uh, of course, it, it makes sense. With inflation running rampant, cost of living has gone through the roof. People are trying to find more affordable ways to take care of their skin. And some of the ways that have been going around is using pickles. Because pickles, what can't they do? Pickles are having a real moment right now. They're putting them in ranch. They're make, people are just doing uh, everything with pickles. Put them in a bag. People are eating them. Uh-huh. They just eat them straight up, drinking the brine. It's not new, but I feel like it's taken to a new level lately. Uh, and now people, because they already have pickles on hand anyways, they're like, why just eat them when I could use them on my skin? So some of the things people are doing is like applying the pickle brine directly to their skin to treat acne. Is Interesting. One, is one thing that people are going with. And I'm here to tell you, or at least relay the message from some skincare experts that you actually shouldn't be doing. If you're tempted or if you've taken part in any pickle skincare, uh, the sk skin, actual real skincare experts that have gone to college for this type of thing are saying don't do that. Yeah, it sounds like a bad idea. Uh, that wouldn't be the first thing I'd want to put on my face, if, if I'm being honest. It feels very, and this is why people think that it is, uh, they've claimed that it would be good to treat acne, for example, is that uh, because the pickle brine is very acidic, that it would uh, help remove dead skin cells and some of the stuff that, you know, clogs up your pores and whatever, the acid will uh, help with your skin. But according to skincare aficionado Tom Watson, Tom said, Applying pickles or pickle water directly to the skin is likely going to cause irritation, leave your skin inflamed, and, worst of all, will leave behind a smell that will linger all day. Now, that is true. Pickle, you ever get pickle smell on your fingers? It, it doesn't go good. away. It does not go away. Pickles are similar to onions in that regard, that they just stick with you. That smell sticks with you for a while. And so, 
skincare experts are recommending that uh, basically you don't do this because they think if you go ahead and do the pickle skincare trend that you may wind up causing other inflammation or other in- issues with your skin that you're then going to ha- still have to go spend money to get products to treat that the, uh, you could have just skipped all of that rigmarole and saved all that money by not putting pickle brine on your skin. Your thoughts? I've done something similar. You have? Mm-hmm. What's that? I have not done pickle on my face. Uh-huh. But what's your, what's your secret to being acne-free? I have done frozen cucumber on my face. Whoa. How does that work? You freeze a cucumber. Uh-huh. And then you just slice off a little slice of it, right? Yeah, like like you put on your eyes. Like you put on your eyes, like but spa. when you but you just take the whole like you you cut off the end of it. Yeah. So the inside is showing. Okay. And then you pull it out of the freezer and you just rub it on your face. Yeah. And it's supposed to help with like puffiness. Okay. Aging and acne. How often do you do that? I haven't done that since last summer. Okay. Because during and the it's summertime, still working. You still have a I mean, beautiful look at complexion. Me. Clear, clear skin. Still very effective. Uh huh. So that's the only thing that I've done that has been similar, and because it feels darn good. Summertime, it's hot out. Yeah. You pull a frozen cucumber out of your freezer. Uh-huh. You rub down your face. Your face is a little warm. Feels really good. And so it's like hydrate your face too. Yeah. And so that's the only thing I've done that's similar. Would I do pickle? No. But yeah. I, I've done frozen cucumber. But pickles are I would do again. What if it's you do a frozen though. pickle? Different. All that vinegar in it. Yeah. Uh, Now, some could argue, I think, that maybe the skincare supposed experts are saying not to use pickles on your skin because Mm -hmm. they're just trying to get you to go buy whatever the fancy product is. So there is that uh, grain of salt that you could take with this. And uh, also some are saying that uh, some even skincare experts are saying, although you may not want to put pickles and pickle brine all over your skin, they don't think that would be effective or safe. Or recommended, they do think that eating pickles could promote healthy skin. Because I'm with of, it because of the some of the uh, chemicals and whatever. There's certain health benefits to that. So th- it's not that pickles are useless, but uh, you. The thing is, you probably already, if you're good, willing to try the pickle skincare, you probably already have had pickles. You already are eating them routinely, anyways, and so you're already experiencing all the best effects of that. And you're trying to take it to the next level. Yeah, if you are willing to do pickles, just just drink a lot of water. Wash your face. That could help. Get uh, it, Cut out that sugar. Get an, uh, an eight hour of sleep every night. Mm-hmm. That's important. That'll, Those big ones. That'll de-age you real Stop fast. Stop skipping to just the pickles. The brine That's right. on your face. It, pickles aren't the answer to everything. It seems worse than just like doing the, the regular stuff. That's enough of that. For more Riot content, head to riot.radiou.com.